Ready? I'm ready. Okay. Hi, I'm Dean Kamen. I'm here today to answer the questions of any of the kids on First Global Teams anywhere in the world. So be kind, give me a question that I can actually answer. You may know me as the inventor of the Segway, but actually it came from a medical product we made to help the disabled, the iBot. I'm also the guy that made the first wearable insulin pumps. I have a company with a thousand engineers working on all sorts of other medical products. We have a not-for-profit called Army, Advanced Regenerative Manufacturing Institute, where we are developing the capability to manufacture replacement human cells, tissues, and organs so that people in the future will have healthier, better lives, and the cost of healthcare will go down. We're very excited about applying technology to solve the real human needs of the future. Of all the inventions I've worked on, the one that I am most proud of, the one that will have the longest legacy, will be first. Because if you believe that the world appreciates inventions, what would be a better invention than finding a way to invent inventors, an army of inventors. And that's what we're doing with FIRST. We're giving kids all over the world the sense that it's accessible, it's fun, it's rewarding to think about solving the world's problems by looking at those problems differently than we have in the past and delivering different solutions than we've done in the past and in doing so, solve the world's problems. I started FIRST Global because I saw that in the U.S., where we've been running it for many years, no matter what community we go into, we see the kids come alive, become energized, become more capable, more productive. And I realized that there are nearly 200 countries in the world, many of which are even more in need of inspiring kids to start developing that muscle hanging between their ears so that they can build a better lives for themselves, that they can earlier in life create partnerships and friendships with their peers, their generation around the world. And I just thought it would be exciting to build a truly global set of uh, uh, kids that can share experience with each other and help each other create a better world uh, for the future. Team Slovakia, I never doubted that if First Global could reach scale, it would be fantastic. My doubt was whether I could convince a lot of the folks that lived in a world without First Global, could I convince them that in fact we could, could show kids how accessible, how exciting, how rewarding uh, technology can be if it's put in the right format, not quizzes and tests and final exams, but com com you know, a competition with regional events and then championship events and come to have a global celebration. I knew that if we could scale it up, it would have a big impact and we're now seeing that it's all working. Team Panama, a lot of people think that FIRST and FIRST Global have grown faster than anybody could imagine. And if you compared us to a science fair, it's all true. I don't know of any global science fairs that take over, you know, Olympic stadiums or have halftime shows done by folks like Will I Am and the Black Eyed Peas. But I never expected that we were competing for that small group of people that already embrace science and technology as kids. So, Team Panama, I believe that if anything, FIRST Global and FIRST need to grow faster than they're growing. I think every kid everywhere should have the opportunity to do what you're doing this season, seeing how much fun, how accessible, how powerful science and technology can be. And I'm always trying to find ways to make it move even faster. Team Sudan, the best way to get the most out of FIRST is to put the most into FIRST. Get your whole community behind it. All the kids on the team should share the learning experience, but they should bring their parents, their teachers, their school, their community leaders, their corporate leaders, their government leaders, 
bring them all, and let's make FIRST Global a celebration that has a cultural impact that will sustain itself as we grow and become more of a true global sport. Team Algeria, I think the most critical invention that's happening as we speak to make education more available and more specific to each student, it's probably the combination of better AI and better global communication systems. Satellites are making it easier and cheaper to send real-time information anywhere on planet Earth and using AI to direct intelligent answers to intelligent questions is going to make education more efficient, more productive, and more fun. Team Zambia, your question about how do you balance practicality with innovation for the future? Good news, that's a great question. Bad news, it's very hard to answer. The balance between having a big idea, but one that's practical, one that can be turned into reality is always hard. If you only have little ideas that marginally improve the world, that's not exciting. But if you have ideas that are beyond the scope of what we can legitimately do in a reasonable time, it's just a dream. I hope by being involved in FIRST Global, all students everywhere will learn how to make the proper balance between those two issues. Team Guinea-Pissau, you ask, what project did I learn a lot from, even if it didn't work out? Here's the really bad news. Most products, projects don't work out, but I learn a lot from all of them. We all know you typically learn more from your mistakes than your successes. I would tell all the students on FIRST Global Teams, you should be learning from all the things you're trying to do now. The ones that don't work should give you a good sense of how to move forward, how to learn from your mistakes, and how to move on. Uh, life is about recovering uh, from the mistakes you make. It doesn't matter how many times you fall down as long as you keep standing up and moving forward. Team Sudan, the best answer I have to the part of my childhood that helped me get to where I am today was a pair of parents, my mom and my dad, that were very supportive. I tried to do a lot of things that most parents would say, that's very risky, that probably won't work. My parents tried to convince me not to do some of those things, but once my mind was made up, my parents supported me all the way. And I think that was critical as I went through a lot of the frustration and a lot of the failures that inevitably come when you're trying to make big changes. Team Luxembourg, if you want me to tell you what one problem should be addressed by robots in a way that it makes a big difference, that's easy. First, robotics. I believe that if you use robots as a way to entice kids into embracing technology, because robots are visually exciting, because they do things that you can appreciate. I think using robots as the platform to get the world's kids to appreciate all the different aspects of science, technology, engineering, inventing, that's going to be a huge, huge, huge win for the whole world. So robots as a source of inspiration to learn science, technology, and engineering is fantastic. I think the biggest win for every kid, particularly in the developing world, of being involved in FIRST Global is that every kid everywhere realizes they have the capacity to learn, to understand, and to use technology to improve their quality of life and the quality of life of people around them. And the more we get the world involved in FIRST Global, the more we're going to bring everybody up to a 21st century world where everybody gets to contribute and benefit by applying technology to solve our common problems. Thank you, Team Ecuador, for that question. Team France, the fact that robotics and engineering in its entirety has some terrible images associated with it, terrible stereotypes, as you ask. The reason we created First and First Global as a sport was specifically to break down those terrible, unrealistic, 
stereotypes that engineers and scientists are nerds or they're antisocial or they're not happy people. The fact is, scientists and engineers and inventors are fantastic people and they have so much to offer the rest of the world and they really need to be in front of kids all over the world and show them how accessible what we do really is and how much fun it is and how you can build great careers around science, technology, engineering, mathematics. So thanks for that question and let's get rid of the stereotypes. Team People's Republic of China, AI is gonna affect all sorts of things. One thing I can assure you though, you need a great technical education to be able to understand what AI really is and how to apply it as a tool, a productive tool. If you don't learn about that tool, you're gonna to be under the bus as the world moves faster. You won't be on that bus taking advantage of these powerful technologies. So I can't tell you exactly how for your generation uh, artificial intelligence will play its way out. But I can tell you, you need to be involved. You need to be prepared. You need to get a firm education so that you can not only understand it, but apply it in meaningful ways in your own career and to help the world be better for all of us. Team Seychelles, you're asking me what technical issue throughout my whole career I have regretted the most. Here's the thing, I have no regrets about all the things I've done, even the things that didn't work because I learned from them. My regrets as I look back will not be about the things I did that might not have worked. My regrets will be all the things I never had time to do at all. I wish I learned more biology, physiology, genomics, proteomics. That field is exploding and I don't know that I'll be able to catch up with that one. The best advice I think I've ever received was never to give up on something I believe in. Uh, most of the things that you want to do that haven't been done, haven't been done for a reason or two reasons. One of the reasons is it's hard. Other people have tried and failed. Another reason is maybe it was such a novel idea, nobody ever tried to do it. But therefore there's no roadmap. I would say the best advice I've ever gotten is don't give up. Solving problems is hard, it's frustrating. You just have to keep at it. Thank you for that question, Team Ukraine. It's a great question. So I've been asked a number of times whether I was the guy that drove the Segway off a cliff and perished. I will paraphrase Mark Twain who said, rumors of my demise have been greatly exaggerated. Sadly, there was a guy that drove a Segway off a cliff. That was not me. I'm happy to say that I did not perish by driving off a cliff in a Segway. To answer the question, how many inventions are to my name or that of my company here? We have about 7,000 patents. If I could really have one invention above all others, it would be a time machine. My top five favorite inventions haven't happened yet. I want a time machine. I want to be able to sit down and just say coffee ice cream and have it appear. And I'd like to be able to have it before dinner without anybody criticizing me for having dessert. I guess my fifth of five great inventions would be a way to invent more than five inventions. If you're asking me what mistake we made that turned into some valuable aspect of something we've done, uh, too many to count. Almost every project we start, we don't end by taking a nice linear path. We sort of go around in circles, we find things that don't work, we fall on our face, but typically in the process, you realize that there are even bigger and better solutions to the problem that you were originally trying to solve, and you solve a, a bigger problem in a better way than you set out to do. Unfortunately, it just takes a lot more time and energy, and it involves a lot more failures. I think the most contrarian take I have, and I think, unfortunately, a lot of other people don't have, 
is that advancing technologies, I believe, are gonna create more careers, are gonna create more opportunities than we've ever seen in this world, and it will distribute them to kids all over the world. I think a lot of people believe that technology is eliminating jobs and careers, and it's making a larger divide between the haves and the have-nots. First Global is here to prove that that's wrong. The only red flags that ever stop me from working on a project is when we suddenly realize we're trying to do something that would violate one of those fundamental laws of nature. When people tell me, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do that, when a person tells me what can't be done, I hear that as a definite maybe. But when the second law of thermodynamics says that won't work, or when you're violating entropy, that's a problem. And we sometimes start a project and realize we're trying to defeat Mother Nature, and Mother Nature is undefeated. I think the most likely thing a human would do that would confuse a robot would be to act perfectly human. Robots are going to be very predictably programmed to use logic. Sadly, most humans don't have that capacity. I think from the earliest days of FIRST, I would explain to people that it's more exciting than any other sport. And most people thought, ah, Dean is drinking his own Kool-Aid, Dean's a nerd, it can't be true that solving difficult technical problems is more accessible and more fun than bouncing a ball or kicking a ball. People thought that was a fake idea that I was using to suck them in. But once people got involved with FIRST, they realized it's the most exciting thing you can do. This muscle is the one most capable of expanding. So I think the idea that FIRST was a fake sport, it was a science fair masquerading as a sport, has been blown away thanks to all the students that have proven how exciting it is. If I was stranded on an island and I had only one thing to bring with me, I'd want it to be a really good boat. Uh, I'd want something that had enough energy to take me anywhere, enough strength and ruggedness to deal with any sea conditions, and a fantastic navigation system. On the other hand, I might want to stay on that island for a while. Which of the nearly 200 countries involved in FIRST would I choose to be in? That's easy. All of them. I would love to know how every team in every country is working to make FIRST Global louder, to make it more available to more people wherever you live. I think it is critical that we accelerate the pace at which FIRST becomes available to every kid that's now preparing to become the generation that will soon be leading the world. And whether you like it or not, that's happening at an accelerating pace. And all of those kids would do better if they learned how to work with technology earlier in life, if they learned how to communicate and cooperate with their peers in other cultures and other countries around the world. And I think FIRST Global has the capacity to do all of that, but only if the kids involved realize that it's up to you, to all of you, to expand FIRST Global as fast as we can.